Hi, uh, thank you for having a time to talk with us, a Eurovision fan. You're very welcome. For any of the baby fans that doesn't know you, yep, <laughs> can you, can no you introduce problem. yourself? Yeah, yes. My name is Lindsay Drakus, and in 2001 I represented the UK with the song No Dream Impossible. I went to Copenhagen as well, so it yeah. was a good time. I was only 16, so. So, how does it feel to perform inside a cruise? It's my first time on a cruise, so I'm looking really forward to it. We've just done a sound check and that went well. So it's gonna be a great night. Great, so one of the questions that the fans in Greece especially would not forgive me if I don't ask is about your last name. Okay. Because there's a little bit of a shot about supposedly that your last name has Greek origins. How true is that? Wow, uh, well my surname Dracus, uh, I do feel that it is quite Norwegian, kind of Viking kind of vibe. Um, I've never heard that it's been a Greek saying, but uh, a Greek, sorry, you know, a sound. Uh, but yeah, do you, get, do you think it sounds Greek? <laughs> Not only me, there was a couple of people oh, okay. that <laughs> We're making these assumptions. Okay, um, not that I know of, no. All right, and in general, uh, do you feel any affinity with uh, Greek culture, music? Oh, we've booked our Greek holiday in the next year. Can't wait, we're going to, where we're going to Rhodes. It's my partner, so it's a lie. Ah. Uh, we're going to Rhodes um, in August, can't wait. And as you said, you were the youngest participant in 2001 in Copenhagen? Yes. How does it feel? Does it add more pressure or...? Because I was so young, I think I, the pressure would be a bit more intense now than it was when I was so young because kind of the young, innocent kind of vibe just creeps in and you kind of just think, right, I'll just get on with it. I was kind of, you know, lots of rehearsals and lots of practice and you don't really embrace what's going off. But in 2001, it was a lot different to it, to it is now. Now it's really hyped, isn't it? It's got lots of like, you know, special effects and, and screens and lighting and fire and fireworks and stuff. Where in my day, it was just a massive stage. And I had like two rappers and uh, three backing singers. And yeah, but the pressure was, the pressure was on, but not as much as, I would probably take it now, if that makes sense, because I was so young. I was only 16. Mm -hmm. How do you feel the contest has evolved? Not just the technology, the fireworks, oh, but wow. in general, because... In general, yeah, it's, so, um, it's really busy now, isn't it? It's got a vibe. Um, it's, it's more, I don't know, I, from doing a lot of performing, uh, this year especially, as well as from 2018, I, I, I did my first ever concert, uh, which was at Europride in Sweden, in Stockholm. And from then till doing the actual Eurovision in 2001, that was the only time I've ever done No Dream Impossible in 2018 at Europride. And from then on, it's, it's a lovely community. Everyone's up for a laugh and a fun time and just to be with each other. And actually everyone really loves each other, don't they? You know, like obviously I'm from the UK, you're from Greek, and you know, it, it, everyone just gets on and loves each other. And that's what it should be about. Yeah, and you already have a, a song that people can resonate with, oh, no yeah, matter okay. the years, yes. no matter the event. Yes. There's someone that there's no knows possible. the lyrics. <laughs> yeah. If you dream big, you know, you'll go, you'll go and do it. And that's what my song was about. Yeah. Which is quite cute, really, when you think about it. All them years ago, from a song that's really meaningful, which it is, to a 38 year old woman now, because that's how old I am now. Um, and it's such an inspirational song. So it's all good. Yeah. So, uh, the Eurovision Cruise has been organized since 2010. Nice. Yeah. I'm loving that you're giving me all this information because I don't know this so good. <laughs> <laughs> and did you have time to see the other acts in their sound check? I did. 
yeah. I did. Uh, you're in for a good show. That's all I've got to say. You're in for a really good show. There's a full band and everything. It's, it's going to be great. Yeah, and is there an act that you are waiting to see perform? Oh, well, the main, the main dude. I want to wear my green. I've got some green in my trainers. Uh, yeah, well, I'm waiting for the main man. I, mean, I think you know who I mean. Carry yeah. Yay! <laughs> see? And, and it's, it, it was amazing watching him do a sound check. Yeah, it's an honor. Yeah. In 2019, yes. uh, Krista, Krista, a Finnish representative from 2013, was the host at the Eurovision Cruise. Right, okay. <laughs> uh, well, I was there. Okay. <laughs> and she said, what I love the most about the UK yes. is that you are almost as bad as, uh, as we are here in Finland <laughs> at Eurovision. <laughs> Which is funny, if you think so, because last year the UK was the second best in yeah. the contest, and this year we also almost make it. Wow. <laughs> we, Finland was second in the contest. Yes, exactly. So uh, my question would be, how important, uh, not only for the contest, but in general in music, is like this idea of having the best results uh, could be number of sales, well, audience, this... I get what you mean, um, but like, for example, um, Lord of the Lost from Germany. Um, I've got connections, my friend writes with them and wrote their Eurovision song. And they didn't do as great, but they're such an amazing band and amazing songs. So I think... I get the reputation of obviously when you don't do as well, but I think it's a difficult one because I think the, the contest for me is everyone just being together in one room and, and just enjoying each other's music when it all gets to the voting bit and gets really serious. But then when you leave it to the public and then the public go for it and obviously it all changed, didn't it? It all just went, ooh, a bit crazy. So for so the question you're saying to me is about us not doing as great. Is that what is that the question you you yeah. saying? How important is like this pressure of getting the results? It could, oh, could be right, okay. in in the contest, but or in general. Personally, I don't think there is a pressure for me personally. In my opinion, um, I think um, I think May went out and did her best. She it's a lot of work running up to it. Obviously, as you know, you've been in some of the events. It's a lot of work, a lot of practice, a lot of media, a lot of... And I just think, you know, for me, the voting, like the, 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 the audience voting is probably one of the main, main bits for me. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, I'm right in saying it's the main bit. You guys are the main part of it. And obviously this year it all changed when the, the, the voting came in. It just all the, all the you know, because it was... Was it Sweden that was at top? And then it just went, duh, 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 and then Finland were like, whoa. So yeah, so not really. Don't think it's that, that much of a pressure, but I think the voting should be just left open to you guys, personally. And d didn't we have America and Canada and wasn't it open world. up to the world? Yes. Exactly, exactly. I think so, we should do a tour in, in um, Australia, we should do a tour in, shouldn't we? We should all go <laughs> <laughs> and just do tours everywhere, in, in America especially. No, but yeah, very exciting. Very exciting times ahead. Yeah, and um, how does it feel to have an impact and a positive reaction from the fans, uh, no matter the event that you're attending? Yeah. Oh. Uh, Eurovision fans are the best fans ever in the entire world and I say that to everybody I feel like I'm part of an, a beautiful Eurovision family that's uh, a good thing yeah <clears throat> no dream possible <laughs> yeah it definitely is so uh, to end this interview uh, mm -hmm. would you like to say anything else to the fans not only to the Greek fans but in general just in general in Europe and beyond just keep on being one big massive lovely Eurovision family with a massive hug around you all and we love you all of you and just enjoy when it, and just enjoy life
because that's what it should be should be about. Yeah. Thank you You're and welcome. enjoy your time at the Eurovision Cruise. Yes. I'm um, can't wait. Looking forward to it. <laughs>